Hello and welcome to my very first SketchUp video tutorial. Now there is already a lot of them out there on the YouTube and other websites. Um, and you may ask why would you create another one? Well, in my opinion, some of them are good. Some of them are very, you know, some of them are amazing. And I, in my history of using SketchUp, I used them a lot. But what I found is uh, a lot of them are failing to do one simple thing. They never take you from the very beginning and try to bring you to the very end. They all trying to work on some specific subject. For example, they will show you how to create a roof on the house or how to make a little tree or how to make a little car or something like that. But they will not take you from the very, very beginning and bring you to the very, very end, which is what I will try to do. Now, there are tutorials out there that have tried to do that uh, and some of them were successful some of them are not so much and I'll just try to do another one I think I can do it a little bit better at least I hope so uh, a little bit about myself I've been using the SketchUp for seven or eight years now uh, starting with the furniture design custom furniture design uh, then moved on to architectural visualizations uh, product design uh, prototype design 3d printing all that stuff SketchUp can be very very useful for all of those things um, I also do some uh, do give some people lessons on the SketchUp and basically I'll try to use that knowledge that I have where people um, are more s more likely to have problems and I'll try to emphasize that in my videos uh, so with that out of the way let's make sure that we're on the same page I'm using the SketchUp Pro you probably will be using it just a basic SketchUp so there are two versions uh, one is obviously paid and one is obviously free uh, the difference are very small and if you're using the free one I think that's the one you should be using because you're just learning you don't know whether or not you're gonna like it and the difference uh, the differences are for example with the professional version you can input and output some additional file formats from some other programs and uh, you can um, it also comes with a additional program that called the layout uh, with the layout you will have some uh, fancy um, fancy options when you're printing stuff and you can make it look very professional and architectural and all those things but before we get to that point we need to make sure we know how to model we need to make sure we know how to use the SketchUp and then if you decide that you need the professional version version well you can just go and get it okay um, one more thing please click on this view button over here and go to toolbars and see this drop down menu now your drop down menu is probably a lot smaller it's uh, it's okay I'll explain that later I basically I just have a lot of additional plugins um, and make sure that you have large tool set styles shadows views sandbox and large buttons now some of those uh, some of this we will use today some of those we will not um, we'll just try to do it naturally and learn uh, different tools when we need to learn them when 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 it's when we actually need to use them okay uh, and the last thing before we can start go to window preferences and over here go to template now there are different templates in the SketchUp templates basically is uh, what you see when you just open the program right uh, what units are set uh, for example inches or millimeters so if you go up and down in this menu you'll see there are a whole bunch of different uh, templates uh, some of them created for architects some of them created for engineers uh, stuff like that I years ago I chose this product design and woodworking and I'm working with inches if you work with the millimeters you can just click here the reason I chose this one it, it doesn't have like you know it comes with a very clean screen believe me or not that's all I need I don't need any fancy um, sort of sky and ground pictures on my background and stuff like that so I suggest you stick with this one at least for now to make sure we're we have we see the same things and um, it's not gonna freak you out or anything so just click OK and we'll, we'll go to our first lesson okay and uh, now we will learn how to get around the scene and how to move around and how to fly around the objects and do all those things so I already uh, created a simple cube over here that is basically a point of reference for us to see um, to see how we, m we can move around if you press and hold a middle mouse button you'll see this little thing appears basically two blue arrows uh, this is your orbit orbit tool when with this middle mouse button pressed if you will 
drag your mouse left or right or up or down you'll see how you basically just flying around the object now it's called orbit for a reason right so you basically just imagine yourself on the orbit of this object and you can kind of just fly around like you're on the moon or something like that um, okay so that's that's something that you will use very often uh, to you know look around your your scene uh, if you will do exact same thing press the middle mouse button but before you start dragging uh, press and hold shift you'll see the hand appear and with this you can shift yourself around the scene left right up down and to zoom in zoom out you will use the mouse wheel up and down okay so one more time just the middle mouse button and mouse dragging is the orbit the middle mouse button with the shift pressed is shifting and the mouse will up mouse will down is your zoom in zoom out uh, one trick it's not it's not necessarily super easy to understand right now but it will be zooming in to the point where to where you point right now so for example if I point to this corner of this cube I will zoom in right on this corner when I'm using my uh, mouse wheel up and down if I will keep uh, if I will show this corner and we'll be zooming in to this corner hope it's clear it, it can be a little bit confusing so I would suggest you can actually pause the video right now go play around with it a little bit and come back when you're ready it might take five minutes it might take 10 minutes it might take 15 minutes just play around it's very important because uh, otherwise it will be uh, hard for you sometimes to keep up uh, if you have difficulties you know turning around and seeing your objects properly okay um, so I will erase this thing that I have this cube to create a new one with you so you know how to do that and that's exact that's the first thing that will create a cube cubes are made out of rectangles and rectangles are made out of four lines okay so go and grab the line tool right here and click anywhere on your screen I will click right here okay and basically now I'm dragging this line after clicking once I just showed the started starting point and now SketchUp is waiting for me to show the end point of this line if you notice uh, as I go parallel to this green line to this green axis my line my line turns green and as I go parallel to the red one my line turns red uh, obviously if I'll go up or down parallel to the blue line it will be blue so I'll go here and I'll click one more time to show the end point somewhere let's say around here and I will make sure that I'm parallel to this green axis click and then I'll go somewhere here parallel to the red axis click and then I'll go somewhere here and then I'll go somewhere here and as I click um, on my start point and creating this an end point you'll see this bluish kind of um, area appears so a little bit of a terminology actually before we get to that you see right now I still have a line tool selected so I to get back to where I was I can go and click over here which is the select tool so you basically select in the select tool uh, by clicking here or um, you can use a spacebar so you don't have to actually press that you can just hit the spacebar at any time and you will have uh, this select tool uh, selected again okay so a little bit of terminology as we promised uh, this 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 and this as I click on it they become blue those are edges okay so to select the edge you need to click on it and see it turns blue that means this edge is now selected okay uh, this, the, that area in the middle is the face and to select the face you again need to click on it and when it's selected the whole bunch of dots appear on it and that's when you know the face is selected okay um, now to create the uh, that was the first way of creating a rectangle using the line tool uh, the second the easier way is actually using the rectangle the rectangle tool uh, which go ahead and click here which is uh, this rectangle right there and click once anywhere in the scene just make sure you don't click on the already created rectangle let's say I want to click somewhere here and drag it and make a second click somewhere here so as you can see I've just created a second rectangle with just two clicks as opposed to going one two three four um, so it's a lot easier this way 
Uh, and uh, right now we will actually create the cube out of this rectangle. To create the cube, go ahead and press and uh, select this push-pull tool. Now this is the tool that you will use probably more than any other tool in the SketchUp, so you need to get familiar with it. It's this little box with the arrow sticking out from it. Um, so click here and then click once on the face, anywhere on the face. You don't have to be precise, you don't have to, just click anywhere on the face, right here. Now drag your mouse up or down, doesn't matter, I would suggest going up uh, and click one more time somewhere here. Now with this we've just created our first cube, okay? And the next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna create the cube with the known dimensions, okay? So because right now we, we've created it but we don't know what size it is it's no use to us this way. Let's say we want to create a cube that will be uh, that will have some measurements on it. So same thing, go ahead, select the rectangle tool, click once, and before you click the second time, if you go and uh, go ahead and have a look at this area right here, as I move my rectangle in the screen, it shows me the size of this rectangle. Um, so just go ahead and without clicking anywhere. So you just click once to start the rectangle. Don't don't click anywhere else and type in, uh, let's say 45 comma 45. Now I work sorry, uh, 45 comma 45. So I'm working with the inches. So that will mean that after I press enter on my keyboard, it will create a rectangle that will be 45 inches by 45 inches. Enter. That's what it is. 45 by 45. Uh, so go ahead, select the push-pull tool, same thing, show the face by clicking on it, drag it up, but before you click the second time, type in 45, which basically you're telling SketchUp that I want the pull to be 45 inches. So 45, enter, that's what we got, okay? All right, so we have two pretty cubes. Now to make the picture complete, let's create a cylinder. Guess what? We're going to first create the circle. So go ahead and click on the circle right here, which is a circle tool. And uh, click somewhere here and drag it out. It uh, doesn't matter on which axis you drag it out because it's, it, it, it's a circle, right? And uh, if you look at the bottom right corner right now, it is uh, it says 40 in the quarter. Now it's basically asking us what radius uh, would we like to apply to this circle. And I would say let's do 30. Okay, so I just typed in 30, now I hit enter and I have this 16-inch uh, diameter, 30-inch radius circle. Okay, I'm selecting push-pull tool. I am showing the face by clicking on it and dragging it up and let's give it a height of 75 inches. So I'm typing in 75 and hitting enter. Okay. So same thing, I would suggest, you know, may you may need to practice with this a little bit. It's pretty simple, but, uh, you know, it's always a good idea to give yourself a little bit of extra time if that's your first time in the program. That's okay, you can pause my video, I'll wait. All right, uh, and now we will move into the moving those, moving and selecting those cubes and cylinders. Um, that's the first part where it gets a little bit trickier and when SketchUp starting to show its differences um, compared to other programs. So if you go uh, ahead and select the select tool, which is this thing right here, okay, and then if you click once on any face, just once, uh, you see it, it, you see those dots everywhere. That means that the face is selected. If you double click on a face, one, two, you select the face with all edges attached to it. In our case, it's only four. And if you triple click, yes, I said triple click, one, two, three, you select the whole thing, okay? This triple click is very unique and very important. Basically, I haven't seen any other program where you need to triple click on things. Uh, it's taking time to get used to that, but uh, it's very handy actually. And uh, a lot of people trying to do it with the speed of sound or something. You don't need to do that. I'll click once on the empty space right here to get rid of the selection. So just hear me doing that. One, two, three. Oh, that didn't work. One, two, three. You don't need to do it super quickly. You don't need to go like, well, uh, you know, a million clicks over there. One, two, three selects everything. 
uh, if you want to click four times that's actually worked that you know some of my uh, students have a problem with that and I just tell them you know it's okay you can click four times if you're not sure you can click ten times it doesn't matter basically three clicks will, will be enough <laughs> but if it's too hard for you to at the beginning to kind of do it just go ahead and keep clicking okay with the entire thing with the entire object selection we c selected we can now move it to move it grab the move tool which is uh, this uh, tool right here with the four red arrows uh, grab it by clicking on it and uh, now well, SketchUp is asking you the first question where is the starting point of our remove it doesn't really matter at the moment so I just click let's say right here and then it is asking us where is the, the where do you want to drop off this object so I'm just dragging my mouse down and I'll say I want to drop it off right here okay I'll zoom out I'll zoom in I'll fly around, I shift around, I look at my pretty cube. Okay, uh, so you just moved it. If that, you can do that only if you selected the entire object. If you select just one edge and you take the move tool and you try to move this edge, you will be moving just one edge, okay? Uh, applies to any edge you can do it with. You can do something like this. Now it's no longer a cube. Um, to go back, uh, to undo, you go Control Z, Control Z. So I'm going back to the original state of this cube. Okay. So this is how you move things or move edges. Or for example, if you select a face and take the move tool, you can you can move this face up or left or right or down. So you can transform this cube any way you want. Uh, I'm clicking Escape to get rid of the command, and I'm clicking spacebar to get this uh, select tool and I'm um, clicking anywhere in the scene on the empty space to get rid of the selection okay so this is how you move things around the scene now I'm moving on to perhaps the most important thing in the SketchUp um, at the moment all those objects are pretty vulnerable uh, because they're open to editing basically at any time we can come here we can grab this edge and we can move it, which is great. But what will happen if we will take this cube right here and move it to this cube right here? Every time two objects collide in SketchUp, they fuse together. What I mean when I say fuse together, right now if I will try to triple click on this cube to select it, one, two, three, as you can see it selects the entire thing. And if right now I will try to, um, let's say, move this face right here, uh, or sorry, let's say I would try to move this um, edge right here, uh, like where, let's say, this edge. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect example. So right now I will try to move this edge right here, and you'll see how the complete mass just it's just not working because those two objects are fusing one right now that that edge from this cube is now part of this cube as well and and it's just it's not gonna work like that and this is a spot where I've seen a lot of people or at least heard about a lot of people dropping SketchUp and saying well this is nonsense right I've just spent a lot of time let's say there's those are not cubes those are more complex objects let's say you've created a house or mm, I don't know you created something and accidentally the those two touched each other and now they fuse together and now you can no longer move this cube away from this cube um, and people just say it's nonsense right I will press Control Z a few times to go back and the way to deal with that and that's what you need to remember from now on and forever every time you are creating an object and you are done with it like you for the moment you're happy with this cube you're not gonna you know move the edges around go ahead triple click on it make sure the whole thing is selected this is very important the whole thing is selected it's all blue and dots are everywhere right click go down in the menu and choose make a group so you we've just created a group it's no longer just a whole bunch of faces and edges this is a one complete group let's go ahead and do this to this as well right click make a group now my my right click menu will probably look different from yours uh, it's okay yours will still have make uh, make a group so just go ahead I'll explain the differences later 
and if we'll try to do the same thing right now uh, I mean moving it and making sure they are intersect you can see that I can still move this one away from this one so by creating a group you make the object a separate unit which will never ever ever collide with another or fuse with another object as long as it is a group okay and to select a group you no longer need to triple click or double click on it one click selects the whole thing because as I said there are no longer edges there are no longer faces it's just a group and you will say well this is great but let's say we want to come back to this cube that we've created before and we want to actually move one of those edges not a problem you can still go back and bring the cube to the original state where it's editable to do that you can select the object right click on it go down in the menu to explode right explode will take it back to where it was now let's see again I need to triple click to select the whole thing I can select one edge and move it any way I want and do all those things now um, that was one way of uh, getting rid of the group and again after I've done editing I will the first thing I will do I will triple click on it and go ahead and click the make the group a second way of doing that let's say you have the object that is grouped uh, you can double click on it and the moment you double click on it you'll see everything else becomes kind of kind of kind of like grades out over here and this one pretty cube is just highlighted and glowing and in the middle of your screen so that means that we actually went inside of this group and we are now we can now do any changes on that without uh, fear of um, uh, you know losing this object so once we in here again we can select the face we can select the move tool we can move this sorry edge we can move this edge anywhere we want I'm pressing uh, pressing ctrl z right now to go back and to kind of go outside of this group again select the select tool and click anywhere on an empty area and uh, it will go away from that group menu okay so this is a very very basic sketch up what we just did right here right now we now know how to create cylinders we now know how to create boxes and with this we will go ahead and create our first house now this is going to be a very simple house this is going to be a very basic house still i think it'll be exciting with my select tool selected i'll go ahead and i'll click and drag the selection thing from top right to the bottom left corner and hit delete on my keyboard i just got rid of everything that we've created um, i'll pick up the rectangle tool and I'll click somewhere here once and I'll give it a size of let's say 350 comma 500 so this will be a size of my house now I said it's going to be boring but not that boring so let's create a simple additional just some additional geometry over here go ahead and pick up the line tool okay and with this line tool go to this corner and when I'm saying go to this corner I mean go right to this corner and as soon as you see this green dot appears and it actually says endpoint that means that your line tool is now snapped to this uh, to this corner and the line will start from where the another line ended okay so click once over there then drag it uh, on the green axis then drag it here on the red axis then drag it back on the green axis to this line and make sure as you go as you go here make sure it's you see the the red line now and it says uh, sorry red dot and it says on edge that means that you are bringing this line right to the edge over there and click okay so because we close the shape every time you're doing lines they are just edges with no face until you close it and then it becomes a face okay um, so now we have this face but we have this extra line that we uh, don't necessarily need so just click on it and hit delete okay so this will be the shape of our house so the next tool that we're going to move is again a very useful tool it's called an offset it's right here and looks like two arcs with the arrow uh, so mm, select it and now show the face on which we will be doing an offset okay it's this face the only face that we have click 
after you click you can drag it to inside of the face or outside of the face and y if you uh, look at the bottom right corner you'll see that uh, again as you drag it um, the the measurement over there is changing so I actually want to drag it inside and I want to drag it six inches because that's the typical uh, size of an uh, external wall so six enter okay so we now have two faces we have one face that is inside and one face that is outside I don't need this inside face okay so I'll just select it by clicking on it make sure it's selected make sure just the face selected make sure edges are not selected so do not double click when you double click you select the face with the edges we just need the face so simple single click as it's selected hit delete you get rid of it perfect so that's that's our outline of our wall now we need to bring it up push pull selecting the face now a lot of people what what they will try to do they will end up somewhere here and I'll say use the push pull tool to pull it up and and they will try to kind of find click here no that didn't work zoom it in make sure you clicked on the right spot don't worry about zooming in zooming out all the time make sure you see what you're doing okay click once on the wall drag it up again in the bottom right corner you see there is a distance um, box type in 110 enter so this is will be the height of our wall perfect and guess what I will do right now I will make it a group because I just created the wall for now I am happy with it I'm gonna leave it like that at least for another few minutes before I come back and edit it again so I don't want to risk it I'll, I'll make it a, a group so I'll go ahead take the select tool triple click make sure everything is selected right click on it make a group okay right now it's safe I know nothing will happen to it and I'm going ahead uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a ceiling to create a ceiling I will pick up the line tool right here and I will show my first corner right here so I'll click and then I'll go to this corner click 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 and I'm making sure that I see that 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 my line is actually snapping to the right spot you can zoom in to make sure okay to here and then to here and then to here okay and as I came back to where I started uh, the face appeared right now this is this is the whole thing I'll take the select tool to show you so this is now a face with the edges it's hard for us to see edges because they are um, they are basically one edge is lying on another edge and it it's not easy to see but it's there okay so I'm taking the push pull tool selecting this face and going up and I'm typing in 12 enter so now this is 12 inches and again as soon as I've done that triple click right click make a group okay in the future I just didn't want to confuse you right now in the future we will create a shortcut key for that uh, but for now we'll be just using the right click okay and I will t uh, now need to create the floor now the floor is the absolute same with the ceiling so instead of creating a new outline going clicking here 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 I'll just try to copy this object to the bottom okay and to do this I will select the move tool and again answering the first question question of SketchUp is where you want to grab this object that you're going to move I'm saying I want to grab it right here in this corner okay and then before I move it if I if I will just move it and click right here right now it will move the entire ceiling and my ceiling will be my floor now I don't want to do that I want to copy it so before I make this final click I just hit control once once you've done that once you hit control it's no longer a move it's now a copy SketchUp does not have a separate copy tool copy is a move with the control pressed okay so now I can click once over here and that will create a copy of this object again practice don't just you know hope to listen to this uh, tutorial and everything's gonna be great and everything you will have no problem practice uh, pause the video make a few copies you know select this one uh, grab the move tool move it control drop it somewhere here play around with it then delete everything that we don't need okay and come back here 
once you back we will create windows and doors okay this is what I'm gonna do right now to do this and I suggest uh, it's just a good way of working uh, with a more or less complex geometry uh, select this ceiling this ceiling is now on our way if you wish because um, I you know I like to look in the room from inside as well so I will highlight this I will select this I will right click and I will choose height okay and I will do the same thing to my floor I will select my floor right click and height don't worry it is not erased it's still there I'll show you later how to bring it back but for us it will be easier when there is no ceiling and there is no floor so first I want to create a door okay and to do this to do any amendments on this geometry I need first to other a explode it B go inside this group for now I will prefer to explode it because I think it's just a little bit easier for you guys to understand what's going on so it's a group at the moment I don't want it to be a group because I need to cut some holes in it I will right click and explode now it's editable and I will pick up the line tool I will click somewhere here I will go up make sure my line turns blue means that I'm going up not a little bit on the left not a little bit on the right I want to go strictly up and then I'll type in 82 which will be the height of my door and then I will go to the left make sure that the line is red now and I'll type in 36 which will be the width of my door and then I'll go down I don't need to type anything I'll just make sure the line goes back to the edge over here okay done now if I grab the push pull tool or actually I'll grab the select tool just to show you what happened here we've created one two three lines and now this is a closed shape okay and the closed shape means that this is now a separate face see if I'm s if I'm clicking here I'm selecting the entire wall if I'm clicking here I'm selecting the entire wall if I will click here I will only select this except the door so this is basically now a separate face okay what does that mean the separate face that means that we can push and pull the separate face separately and this is exactly what we need to do so go ahead grab a push pull tool select this face and go inside and type in and just hit six which is the, the the thickness of our wall and hit enter so once you've done that you now have a door opening which is what we wanted to have okay so a second door I will go ahead and create right here and I'll just show you a slightly different way of doing that so we could have used a rectangular tool to do that uh, again same thing as I showed you at the very beginning of this lesson um, click once over here and the second time before you click type in 36 oh sorry uh, yeah 36 comma 82 and hit enter okay so we now have the door over here as opposed to using line tool we just use the rectangular tool and go ahead and grab the push pull show the face now in the first example I just typed in six and I hit enter I sorry, sorry first I show the direction in which I want to go then I uh, hit six then I hit enter and it punched the perfect hole because I knew that uh, the thickness of my wall is six inches what if you don't know and you don't really want to measure you can just show to which edge you want to go at it in this case I want to go from here from from this edge to I, I wanted to punch the hole to here to to, to this edge or to this corner or whatever you want it doesn't matter it, it has to be somewhere here so I can just click on this edge and the SketchUp will know that this is how far I want the hole to be punched okay hopefully this is clear if not again rewind listen again try to uh, try to practice a little bit and if everything else fails or <laughs> not if, even if it's not ask the questions in the comments okay uh, last thing we'll do today we'll create the simple window right here when I'm saying window I just mean the opening uh, we're not there yet we're not gonna be creating the actual complex pretty windows today okay so I'll select the rectangle tool boom and I will click once somewhere here second time somewhere here now I don't care what size this window is there is no standard for windows um, and again I'll grab the push pull select push it in to this edge right here click 
done. Okay. Now, what will I do? I will make it a group because I'm done editing. So I will choose the select tool. I will triple click on that, right click, make a group. Okay. And we're basically done, but we still need to bring back our ceiling and our floor. To do this, to do that, we need to go to edit, edit, unhide, all. Okay. So, and our ceiling and our floor is back. Hopefully, that first lesson was more or less clear. Hopefully you learned something today. If not, or if you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, go ahead and uh, just uh, use comments for that. And uh, have a great day.